right so third learning outcome be able to design a database system design a relational database to be the specified design brief explain how design documents meet the design brief evaluate database design following a feedback so relational database design will be discussed by the design fundamentals then logical versus physical design will be discussed database documentation stakeholders of the database documentation documentation types then database evaluation performance evaluation benchmarks verification and validation will be discussed so we we'll start with the uh, database design so a well designed database is a prerequisite for a fast data retrieval and data updates before you build the data tables and other objects that will make your system it is important to take a time to design it a good design is a key stone to create a system that does what you want it effectively accurately and efficiently so basic steps in designing you should consider to determine the purpose of your system why you are designing determine tables that you will need in the system determine the fields you need in the tables what fields it will need what fields with unique values determine relationship between tables refine the database to add the data and create other objects that you should really be able to know in advance entity relationship diagrams you should be able to know that what entity is related with another entity which which entity is related with which entity and how they will be related for example sales representative product warehouse customer order they are basically related with each other and they are to be defined with entity relationship diagrams and within the entity relationship diagrams you will need to define the relationships in between them for example once uh, the we discussed the and uh, relationships earlier like one to one one to many many to many and those in relationships should have been defined using the entity entity relationship diagrams so certain symbols could be used for the entity relationship diagrams like this process this oval this uh, square and the rectangle this and the triangle this is called the decision and there are all of these symbols and the relationships could be defined one to one one to many and those concepts we discussed earlier so everything should have been represented through the entity relationship diagrams that you will need to create for your database design then you should define the data flow diagrams that how the data will flow from your database so it is defined using the data flow diagram for example user puts the order which is processed through the process order and then an entity this particular process gives further information to the invoices certain orders are generated user is supposed to in the in uh, start the collect payment uh, action fulfillment fulfillment is carried out shipment is done so kind of data flow diagram is necessary to define in advance in order to provide the clarity of the database design otherwise without the data flow diagram and entity relationship diagrams you cannot design a database so certain database data flow diagram symbols are external entity process data store data flow so entity could be represented with the square process is zero data store is represented with a cut off and this rectangle data flow is represented through arrow now database development review a design review are the important aspect of the system development life cycle 
so you should consider the review of certain things so that you could develop a proper database system you should review the conceptual design you should review the logical review design you should review the physical design organizational review sql review pre implementation review post implementation review so the conceptual review is the first base should be the consensus conceptual design review purpose of this review is to validate the application concept whether you have the valid application concept or not if if there is a case this involves the presentation of the statement of purpose as as well as general overview of the desired functionality that will be provided by the application so conceptual view you should be very much clear logical view all data elements descriptions and relationships should occur during the logical design review so at the superficial level you should know that which elements would be used and what relationship would be used among them physical design review in this component which most db2 developer associate with the design review so physically that how physically you will be storing into the database and which database actually you will be using like a db2 and how you will be creating the tables how you will be storing how you will be uh, giving the space allocation to them organizational organization design review similar in scope but no less critical is organization design review this review addresses the enterprise wide concerns of the organization with respect to the application being reviewed so what are the concerns of the organization for which you want to design sql design review the sql design review must occur for each sql statement prior to production turnover so sql is basically a structured query language Re you really should be able to review that uh, how you will be retrieving the data from the database and whether will you be able to retrieve the data using the sql or not so that you should be very much uh, confident that your retrieval query is sufficient to retrieve the data pre implementation design review the six phases is, are the pre implementation design review simply consists of overall the review of the system which we discussed earlier like uh, and the post like these this, we discussed physical and the logical physical organization sql these are the pre implementation design view the post implementation design reviews are the final phase in the post implementation this is necessary in order to determine if the application is meeting its objectives these objectives include both performance objectives and functionality objectives if any objective is not being met a plan for addressing the deficiency must be proposed and acted upon so post implementation gives you a testing pre implementation gave you a kind of the five steps so it was about the first uh point of the learning outcome which was the database design to you fundamentals and uh, logical versus physical reviews we come to the second one database documentation or database design documentation documenting a database during its development is best practice to ensure that the organize organizational schema data objects and other related information are captured for future reference this documentation often takes many forms including data dictionary database administrator guides database architecture documentation and database functional specification normally 
use the term data dictionary to refer to the database documentation. The data, database documentation serves multiple audiences including database architects, developers, database administrators, production support staff, quality assurance staff. The information included in the data dictionary is hidden from normal users to prevent any corruption of its contents while the data dictionary in a database serves an administrative and management function. It does not include any actual database data. Though a relational database management system requires a data dictionary to access data from the database. So if you have a database data dictionary, then according to the data dictionary, the data is retrieved. The some more slides about the data dictionary are given at the end of the slide and uh, I will complete these slides first. Typical elements to include in your database documentation, you should consider capturing the following information in your database documentation. For example, data element numbers, how many data elements you will be using, the names of the data elements, the short description of data elements, security classification for data elements, listing of related data elements, field names upon, so whatever the, basically the data you will be using is basically the metadata, means the data about the data. If you say that you have a customer table, then the customer table itself is defined by a certain metadata that, okay, the customer table will have six columns customer each column will have the particular size particular integrity constraints applied so that kind of database is basically the data about the element so this is a kind of database documentation so typical elements include the database documentation code format the default values the element coding the references to other documents database table References, sources of element, valid dates, history references, external references, data element versions. So these are highly technical terms, but you should be able to uh, understand that these are the key concepts. And when you will really look at the particular database documentation, then you will find some specific implemented uh, ranges and data there in particular database. The database table information documentation, you will also need the database table documentation. So if it is a table, as I already explained, that table should have a table name, database or table name owner, data element columns, names and details, key order for all elements, database index information, technical table organization, duplicate row information, are the duplicate rows allowed or not, data element list, table security classification. So these are kind of uh, higher abstraction uh, names. Previously, those were the uh, more detailed technical names of the fields that you need to define about the table. Next is the database architecture focuses on design, development, implementation and maintenance of computer programs that store and organize information for businesses, agencies, and institutions. A database architect develops and implements software to meet the needs of users. So architecture is basically the design, development, and implementation and maintenance. So all together, everything related with the database is the database architecture. And here is the data dictionary. Data dictionary, for example, for the users, are uh, student, lecturer, course, subject, and the table space name is users. This one is user, course is not given the name, subject users, the, the cluster names are empty, status is valid, PTC free, these are highly technical you know, terms. So that is the dictionary about the users table. Select asterisk from users table, it means how the users tables is stored and which names, which particular constants are applied. So this is a kind of data dictionary, a dictionary of the database structure. So 
advantages of the data dictionary it gives the well structured and clear information about the database one can analyze the requirement any redundancy like duplicate columns tables etc it's very helpful for administrator or any new database administrator to understand the database data dictionary helps user by providing all details in it disadvantages it should be well designed in advance to take the advantages of it the cost of data dictionary will be bit high as it includes its initial build and hardware changes as well as the cost of maintenance only for technical users so obviously it is helpful but when you will really wanted to create the data dictionary you should have expertise you should have time and uh, you should have you know the reason to create it otherwise it is useless so the second point is also discussed now the third point is about performance database evaluation performance evaluation benchmark benchmarks validation and very uh, verification once you have a database you should be able to test the database database testing includes performance data validity data integrity testing performance check related to database and testing of the procedures triggers functions in the database consider an application that captures the day to day transactions details for users and stores the details in the database from database testing point of view the following check plans should be performed the transactional information from the application should be stored in the database and it should provide the correct information to the user for example if the user is not getting the correct and updated information from the database it means the database is not working information should not be lost when it is loaded into the database it shouldn't be the case that for example you stored certain uh, elements into the database and uh, so you stored certain data into the database then some of the records for you know the uh, missed or lost or you know the corrupted and you got a loss only completed transaction should be stored and incomplete operation should be aborted by the application like i discussed earlier the commit and rollback like a transaction processing systems uh, the transaction should either be completed or incomplete it shouldn't be the case in the mid in between access authorization to database should be maintained no unapproved or unauthorized access to user information should be provided the structural database testing should be done functional testing should be done non functional testing should be done structurally it deals with the tables and column testing schema testing stored procedures and view testings checking triggers functional it involves the checking functionality of the database from user point of view when you talk about the structure it means you are doing you are checking each and everything one by one when you talk about the functional it means a user is testing most common type of functional testing is white box testing and black box testing non functional testing involves the load testing risk testing database testing stress testing basically white box testing is it means you look at every internal component one by one and like you are testing the internal units of a database when you are doing the black box testing it means you are testing a system as a whole you are not going to look at into the uh, database components with open eyes or for example with a white box a uh, clear or visible box but black box overall okay whether the system is going good or not that's a black box and uh, the white box is testing each and every small component while non functional testing is basically that's the testing which you are not doing by yourself but it is done automatically for example if you are loading the database if it loads okay it means you are doing non functionally and you are you, that's a uh, fine a risk testing in the database if it is not you know giving you any problem it if it is not 
you know passing the stress testing stress testing is for example if you are using the database for you know too much data then whether it is capable to take the stress of the data or not whether it is fulfilling the requirements the minimum requirements or not so overall the performance testing of the data base is non functional uh, testing then structural database testing involves the verifying those component of database which are non exposed to the end user so structural uh, database testing is basically the we you can say that white box testing you are looking at into every each and every small component schema mapping testing schema it involves validating the objects of the front end application with database mapping so for example in the microsoft sql server a tester can write simple queries to check and validate schemas in the database if the tester wants to make changes to table structure he or she should ensure that all the stored procedures have that tables are compatible with this change for example uh structure testing functional testing non functional testing so overall whenever you are required to test any individual component from structure to function function to non function everywhere you map the objects you validate the objects and when you do an overall testing it becomes a mapping of the testing whether you are providing or sending particular data from one table or not to another table successfully or not so overall schema testing map testing is done which is interrelated with different structures structural testing functional testing if all goes through well then your map testing is done structural database testing continue stored procedure and views testing basically you have you create some procedures methods inside the databases for example if i say account function account function can give you the total number of records into a table so it's, it can be a predefined uh, function or user defined function so you need to test it trigger testing triggers basically you create in a database to in order to create a particular actions to be taken by the database tables and columns testing validating data tables into the fields for example if you have applied certain constraints into the database like unique constraints the primary key constraints referential key constraint null not null constraints then basically you are doing the tables and columns testing that whether they are working fine the constraints are working fine or not database server check the database server check involves the verifying the database server can handle the expected number of transactions per as per the business requirement so for example if the server is supposed to do the 100 transactions uh, uh, at one time then probably you could check your database server that whether it it can really do 100 transactions at a, at one time or not probably it could fail at 60 transactions and probably may not fail and it could be okay with the 120 transactions so database server is to be checked functional testing we discussed earlier earlier the uh, internal components the black box testing will be the overall system checking white box testing will be the uh, individual components in detail non functional testing is basically the performance it could be the load testing the it could be the stress testing that how much the stress could be given to the database and the components of the database that they could be the database components includes one or more tables of the data the query languages retrieval specific data uh, elements forms for entering the displaying that entering and displaying the data additional components could be reporting tools customized page views relational databases have such schemas that define the relationship between the tables and may include components that automate the routine tasks the components overall could be the tables queries forms of a database reports pages 
macros modules they really define the uh, components extreme data when choosing what data to use to test a system you need to think about why we are testing the system to see if it works to check it if it doesn't works or breaks out so normal data values are normal this data that would normally be entered into the system the system should accept it process it and we can check it extreme values are the the limit of the data extreme values are still normal data but however the values are chosen to be at the absolute limit of the normal range when when i say i uh, when i said for example a database could hold the 100 transactions at a time then you definitely try to execute 100 transactions that would be the extreme data value and probably you could try with the 120 then and then you will be able to do the extreme data then error handling that how the database is able to error handling what is the purpose of error handling how the error should be handled in case of any inappropriate data is inserted into the tables or any uh, misconnectivity or any connectivity errors could be uh, occurred so the database should have some capability to uh, uh, handle those errors so I hope that uh, superficially you should have been able to catch the idea of these topics whichever I have discussed today and uh, as you will be uh, uh, reading again and again then you will be able to uh, more detail and with you know the more knowledge so i hope you are listening to me can you get back to me Khalid? yes sir i'm listening okay and yusuf i think he has a problem of the microphone but i think he's definitely listening and uh, yusuf can you text me that uh, everything was okay and obviously i will uh, upload this session and uh, if you have any question now then you can ask now otherwise uh, i will upload this session you can re uh, read it and uh, as well as you can listen to the recording and uh, you can send me questions you know the after the session via email and uh, I would advise you to go through the uh, assignment briefs as soon as possible as soon as the unit is completed so that you should not forget the concepts which have been discussed into the uh, these uh, uh, sessions so is everything okay now should we yes. close the session now Yes, sir, you can. Okay, that's fine. So, see you next week for the level four. And, uh,